Escobar hits one deep to right. Back goes Manessis near the wall. And it's up. And one on Escobar with a 2 1 homer to put the Mets in front. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Shea Station Podcast. It is Monday, September 5th. The Mets have just dropped two out of three to the worst team in baseball, the Washington Nationals. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jack, a.k.a. Jolly Olive. Joining me as always is Jerry Blevins. Jerry is rocking the Next Man Up shirt from our clothing line at Shea Station. I definitely wasn't wearing the same shirt this morning and changed. That's a thing that didn't happen. And Jerry, how was TV this weekend, man? It was great, man. Uh, not great. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. I did my job. Uh, but you <laughs> you had to go change. I pulled seniority. I pulled rank. <laughs> and you had to go switch your shirt up. Uh, sky is falling. Do you feel it? Uh, no, but the season's already ended like 50 times this year. So I'm yeah, like... but this one, this one. So for, for reality here, that was the worst series I've seen them play. This was the first time all season where they let, they let go. They let down, they, they played down to their competition, thought they'd just roll the balls out and then, you know, give it a, give it, a hat tip to the Nats because they actually played really good. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of their performances, obviously, but uh, on the other end, the Mets looked tired and sluggish. So this rain out, you know, hopefully gets the guys back on track. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it, it's exactly what I said last episode, what I was hoping wouldn't happen, where the Mets took their foot off the gas pedal. I think they eased up a little bit this series, especially after a game one win, and they kind of just coasted the last two games. A lot of questionable they decisions. the first game, to be a honest. A little bit, yeah. It was tied did. there they, for a they second. They almost let that go. Um, I'm not worried, though. Uh, this was the first time all season. It's a long season to have not have any of this. Um, my partner, Gary Apple, talked about after the game, the day of the old timers game, he said they came out kind of sluggish. And that was the first time that he noticed it. I didn't notice it then. Uh, but this one, this one was like, oh boy, this whole series was, you know, pretty rough. They felt like they could just play pretty laid back and, and win. And they, it didn't work out for them. Uh, but again, I'm not worried. This is, it happens, man. This is a long season. Um, it's, crazy that it's taken this long for them to kind of have a stinker of a series like a dud um but i think they'll be fine man i I still have faith in this team i have faith in the leadership i have faith in in buck show walter led ball club um but they better show up and and play you know some really hard-nosed baseball they were sloppy yeah sloppy i think is a pretty good word a lot of uncharacteristic errors you know we'll talk about that as well uh they're rained out today which is i think a good thing uh they're rained out in pittsburgh they'll play a doubleheader wednesday i think they need a day to collect themselves calibrate because this is a uh, big series now when it originally probably wasn't going to be because now their lead is down to one game we are going to talk about all of it in our game recaps which are brought to you by our presenting sponsor the guys we love bear burger Bear Burger. They're not bogged down by labels. Their menu is filled with options for everyone, regardless of your preferences. So whether you're 100% vegan or you're craving a specialty burger, we won't judge you at Bear Burger. We won't. We don't judge. It's food that's made to taste great. Something for everyone. Yes, even you. You can now create your own favorite burger at Bear Burger as well. Build your own creation and let us know John Boy sent you and then tweet it to at Bear Burger for a chance to win a Bear Burger gift card. Love that. I think I'm going to do that. Can I win? I think so. Oh, we I already won. They use sponsored. your burner. They sponsored. Don't do Jerry Blevins. Do like JB and then a bunch of numbers and they won't know yeah. it's you. I'm going to be the egg on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, looking to feed the whole family? Check out the new family special on bearburger.com or your favorite ordering platform. Choose up to two cubby meals and three select burgers or shares for $49.95. Check website for details. They also got the uh, Bear Burger Kitchen and Bar Happy Hour. It's hands down the best in New York City. $1 PBRs. College me is screaming. $5 mules. Now me is screaming. I love Moscow mules. Uh, $5 <laughs> martinis. Half off bottles of wine. They got everything you could need at the bar. Available seven full hours every month. Monday through Friday from noon to 7 p.m. All of these orders and all these delights are just for you. So click the link in our description uh, to find yourself at the best happy hour, tastiest burger joint, and overall great spot at order.bearburger.com. Thank you to them for being our presenting sponsor and our recap sponsor for today. Jerry, are you ready to dive in? 
Thank you, Bear Burger. I am ready. Let's do it. Roll the music that I can't hear. Because- I got to, by the way, I got to meet the uh, the man behind the music, which was Oh, nice. you met Mikey. Yeah. I How did. was that? I did. I said thank you because I love our recap music. Oh, it's the best. Mikey is now a great employee at John Boy Media doing sound stuff. So shout out to shout him. Shout out, Mikey. Another Mets fan at the company. We continue to stock up. It's amazing. JM Mets coming through. Okay. Game one. The Mets welcome the Nationals into town after a big series win against the Dodgers. Feeling high, riding a lot of momentum. They get started in the first with a Brandon Nimmo double and a Pete Alonzo walk. But those guys get stranded on base once again. That is the story of this series, guys. Left on base, chances out the window. Later on, though, McNeil singles and comes home on Eduardo Escobar. Two-run homer off Josiah Gray. Escobar was one of the lone bright spots in this series. That was his first home run since July 26th against the Yankees at Citi Field. He had no home runs in August. After Robles triples, Nito throws away the pickoff throw at third, allowing him to score on a strikeout. Very messy play there. Uh, Lane Thomas reaches on the drop third strike, and then a walk and a single loads the bases, but luckily Peterson keeps his composure, a theme of this season for him, and he's able to escape. The Mets load the bases in the fourth on a Vogelbach walk, a McNeil double, and an Escobar intentional walk. Nito hits into the sacrifice fly as the throw goes to third. The Mets get doubled up there, but they do get a run. Uh, McNeil had a really nice, big, smart uh, baseball IQ play as he ran back towards second base to allow Vogelbach enough time to come home. Vogelbach is obviously not fleet of foot so that's a big run for the Mets there but later on uh, the Nationals get one back they get singles from Joey Manessis and Alex Call to make it a 3-2 game in the fifth but Peterson gets a nice pickoff on Call to end that inning uh, but trouble continued in the sixth as well Garcia singles he's been a Met killer all season long and Vargas doubles to tie the game at three so Peterson gets pulled five in the third innings three in runs eight hits one walk six strikeouts on 95 pitches not the outing we wanted to see from Peterson he had his moments there for sure uh, but the newly minted Michael Givens, who's been really sharp as of late, comes in and gets two ground outs to stop the bleeding and keep it tied. And then Pete Alonzo, who needed a home run bad, finally gets one in the bottom half of that inning to make it 4-3 to three Mets. It's just his third home run and his last 28 games to, to that point to put him at 32 on the year. And the Mets rally after this home run to put the game away in the sixth inning. Vogelbach draws another walk. McNeil and Canna get singles to load the bases. Escobar hits into the sacrifice fly. Canna gets doubled up, so that's two sacrifice flies where the Mets get doubled up and leave some potential runs on the table but luckily this time they come through and keep the line moving next man up as Jerry's shirt says Nito singles to right to keep the line moving Nimmo triples for a four run sixth inning off Gray and Ciszek and then Michael Givens has looked really good he gets five outs of hitless relief he goes the extra inning there Joely Rodriguez and Seth Lugo combined for four strikeouts and two scoreless innings to seal the win the Mets six through nine hitters were the story of this game they go seven for 13 with four runs five RB two doubles and a homer and the Mets do take game one seven to three uh good win it was a good win again you said it not the outing we were hoping for from from David Peterson um but he got he got enough he did enough the two so I I was curious the the two sack fly double plays in one game from one team, I, I I had the guys at SNY do some research. Shout out Sean Poter of SNY. Uh, it was the first time, I think, so 1974, this is again off the top of my head, could be wrong. Since 1974, there's only been one other occasion, and it was the, like 2000 Houston Astros. And the, yeah, there was like, I was like, two sacrifice fly double plays? Like, that's weird. <laughs> it's just weird that it happened twice in one game. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. So it's only, since 1974, it's only happened two times. So yeah, and luckily it didn't come back to bite the Mets because that could have been very pivotal uh, if the Nationals kept on hitting there. Yeah, it was sloppy. They they there was there were sloppy events that that happened. Um, but they ultimately, I, Steve Ciszek hates facing the Mets. I think so. Yeah, I want to pull up his numbers against the Mets. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now as right, we perfect. speak. Well, while yeah. you do that, I just want to highlight two guys that have, I think are the newest Met killers on the block. Luis Garcia is batting 452 against the Mets this year. Ildemaro Vargas is batting 500 against the Mets this year. Eight for 16. These two guys, I don't know what it is, but whenever they come into town or we go to D.C., they just rake against us, which, you know, good for them because I think Vargas is a journeyman and he's, you know, finding some regular at-bats now. But, man, I don't know what it is. What's in the water, man? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 
he 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 enjoys facing the Mets. Ildemar. <laughs> what about uh, C-Shack? So C-Shack versus the Mets. He the opponents are batting two sixty, okay. slugging four sixteen, OPS of seven eighty four. Not terrible. Not terrible, but uh, the OPS plus of one forty six. That kind of not so good. Shows you, not yeah, it's so not good. great. <laughs> That's not great. Um, they're like a big leaguer and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh uh the game one i mean you got some performances from uh a big home run from alonso you talked about that was nice you got escobar hitting one that was very nice as well uh he hit that from the left side yeah which was he was basically a platoon player when brett Beatty was you know was playing brett Beatty was facing all the righties and Escobar was facing only lefties and batting right-handed. Rightfully uh, so. So it was nice to see him get one from the left side and kind of because we need him. If he's if he starts to hit, our lineup gets exponentially better because there's another power threat sliding in behind uh, Pete Alonso yep. to protect Pete because Vogelback hasn't been great. Darren Ruff hasn't been great. Uh, Canna has been, but he's been down a little bit. Maybe you move Canna up there. But again, I don't want to mess with Canna's mojo. Exactly. We exactly. like him to extend, you know, those at bats and not force him to drive the ball. And Escobar would be an absolute, you know, boon for this this lineup. So that was that was a positive sign. And you'll take us to game two. That is game two. Mad Max Scherzer, the man himself, going up against Patrick Corbin, who has been an absolute easy cakewalk for this Mets lineup, especially Mr. Pete Alonso and his career. Uh, you can just chalk this up for a, for a big victory for the Mets. Uh, this was an easy W. Ah, not <laughs> quite. Didn't work out that way for us. Um, Luis Garcia in the first of the uh, first top of the first hits a home run off Scherzer. It happens. Scherzer gives up a lot of solo home runs, especially in the first. The Mets fall one nothing. Eduardo Escobar, this time from the right side of the plate, off Patrick Corbin, hits another home run. Very positive sign. Back-to-back days, each side of the plate. In the third, to tie it one-to-one. Uh, and then you have a tragedy. The possibility of losing Max Scherzer, who comes out after five. Uh, spoiler alert, it should be okay. He said it was fine. It was very precautionary. Left side fatigue. Didn't want to give himself into a vulnerable position. Uh, I thought it was a very smart move considering the calendar, but he comes out after five. It's a 1-1 ball game. Mr. Tommy Hunter, who looks great, he comes in uh, in on a short notice, gets a a clean sixth. Joely looked good in the seventh. Adavino, the man himself, Mr. Setup, and comes in into the eighth and actually gives up a homer to Lane Thomas, who destroyed a, a slider that didn't quite get there. Uh, but he deposited, deposits it into the stand, and the, the Nationals take a two-to-one lead. Uh, Adonis Medina comes in for the ninth and a two-one ball game, and the wheels fall off. They score five runs. Positive note: Bryce Montasteoka makes his debut for the Mets. Uh, huge human throwing cheese balls up there, 98 plus. Uh, So congratulations to him for making his debut. But the Mets fall in an ugly one, seven to one to those Nationals in a game that should have been an absolute easy win for those guys. We get a little bit of a a rude awakening. Scherzer goes down. We're still worried about that, but uh, you know, turns out he'll be fine. He expects to make his next start, which is great. Um, So that's not, Terrible news, but uh, the way they played was brutal, and that is game two. Yeah, brutal is a good way to say it. Um, early on, they looked good. You know, McCann guns down a runner. Lindor turns that nice double play, keen defense there. Escobar's homering from both sides of the plate. It kind of looked like, all right, they'll come around eventually, second time through the order against Corbin. And I don't know what's in the water for Corbin, but he's had two good starts in a row, so maybe he's turning things around. Um, but, man. Corbin looked Corbin looked really good. He looked like Corbin. He, he changed, looked like he changed. Yeah, like again, the Mets played not Mets brand of baseball, but the Nationals as a whole 
played good. They played sharp. They played aggressive. Uh, Corbin changed his entire approach to, he was dotting fastballs inside, throwing harder than he has. And he chewed him up. He gave up, he went seven, gave up three hits, one run that, that one home run to Eduardo Escobar. But outside of that, the Mets were pretty much at his mercy. They only managed four hits the whole game, only went 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position, only had two at-bats the whole game with runners in scoring position. Yeah, and they had just one walk from the fourth to the seventh inning, and that's the second and third time around the order against Corbin, which is usually when they absolutely kill him. Usually first time through the order, Corbin's actually pretty decent. It's those later innings where he runs into trouble. Um, that's just his first win against the Mets this season. Even with seven innings and one earned run, his ERA is still above five against the Mets, which just goes to show you how well they were hitting him before. Uh, but, you know, we've said it a lot. When Alonzo doesn't go, the lineup tends to not go. And a lot of these guys yeah. were taking short at-bats, not working great counts. Um, and Corbin, you know, to his credit, looked good, was pounding strikes. His fastball looked good. Uh, and the bullpen definitely did their part. Tommy Hunter with another scoreless inning. Joey Rodriguez looked good again. Adovino, I don't really think you can blame him. He's just been so, so good. It's his third I mean, it's run gonna happen. It's in his gonna last happen. 20 games. It's going to happen, naturally. Yeah. Um, but Adonis Medina with a, a rough one. Kind of put the game out of reach. I oh, understand. Like the leadoff walk. Like, I was like, this is not going to go well because it was a 2-1 ball game, and he comes up and walks the first guy pretty, pretty sloppily. And uh, – I was like, uh oh, and he ends up giving up five hits, five runs in a third of an inning. That's gonna ruin. That's gonna ruin your season for sure. Uh, you mentioned Montes de Oca, which you know makes his relief good for him. Uh, his debut there, he becomes the third Mets pitcher this year to throw 100 plus miles per hour, right? With Diaz and Degrom, so and Blevins, right? And Blevins. Oh, yeah. I wasn't this year. That's oh, right. right, right. It, it was every year leading up to this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Broke your streak. Uh, throwing 100, that must be like fun. What What did you top out at? Like 94? 98. 98? Good for yeah, you. Yeah, not in the big leagues. I think 95 might have been oh, okay. the fastest pitch I threw. I in AAA, I threw 98. There was like a brief period of time when I played for the the Sacramento River Cats when I first got traded over and moved up. I was like 94 to 97 for like two, three weeks, and I was throwing 93 to 95 for the four weeks before that. And then I I got to the big leagues that year and I didn't have it anymore. Really? And I chased it for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> maybe even like five, six years. And I never got it back. Um, I kind of fell back to normal. I don't know what happened, but yeah, I touched 98, like four or five times. Um, I topped out at 72 and then I, I never got there again. 72 is pretty good. It's not bad. Hurt my arm I'd, a little bit. I would say that's above average. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take above average for sure. I'd say that's above average. Take that to the bank. All right, so the Mets lose game two, but it's okay. There's still one more game. We can easily win the series, take the rubber match like we always do. It's the Nationals, right, guys? Game three, Carlos Carrasco returns to the bump. A little early, kind of nice, only three weeks away, basically, two and a half if you can call it that. He does run into immediate trouble. He didn't make a rehab start after all. He surrenders two hits and a run within five pitches in the first innings, and the Mets are immediately down one nothing. But they get a run back. Alonzo draws a walk. Vogelback snaps his offer with a single to set up a game tying sacrifice fly for Jeff McNeil. Tomas Nino comes up in a big spot with runners on the corners, but he ends the threat and keeps it tied 1-1. One one. And then the Nationals throw together a rally in their second time through the order against Cookie in the third. Lane Thomas singles with one out, and the inning could have ended right here if not for Jeff McNeil kind of muffing, kind of a tough double play ball. He gets the error. It's a play we've seen him make a lot this year. And then the wheels just kind of fall off. Manessis loads the bases with a single. Kybert Ruiz hits a two-run single. Hernandez reloads the bases with a walk. And then Vargas, the new Met killer, hits another two-run single. So Cookie gives up four in the third inning. He goes two and two-thirds. Only one earned run allowed, but five runs total. Six hits, two walks, two Ks on 54 pitches. And it's five to one Nationals early on. And the Mets get nothing going against the guy they have killed 
for his entire career. Eric Fetty gets his first win ever against the Mets in 16 games against them. They get just two hits from the third to the sixth inning. Uh, the Nationals add more on Cesar Hernandez's first home run of 2022, a two-run shot off Trevor Williams, who looked pretty good in long relief today. Uh, the Mets got consecutive singles in the seventh inning from McNeil and Canna. Then Escobar hits a fly ball to left field. It's dropped, and instead, it turns into a double play because the runners went back to their bases. It was just that kind of day for the Mets. Uh, they got good bullpen help again, but it did not matter because the offense was quiet. Just one run on six hits, 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position, six men left on base. The Mets go down very quietly in their rubber match on Sunday, 7-1. to They drop the series to the Nationals, and the alarm bells are ringing good job thanks <laughs> uh couple of things uh cookie came back really early wasn't that sharp yeah. but that error from and it was an error 100 that is a easy play like mcneil has played gold glove second base yeah. all year long like gold glove this play I don't know what happened. That's a play that you got to make. It happens, but then your pitcher can pick you up, but it just didn't work out today. That was an inning, inning, double play, almost tailor-made. That's an, that's a play. A lot of people said, like, you know, it's a hard play. No, you got to make that play. Nine, uh, ten times out of ten, that play's got to be made. At least one out. I like the tough coach Jerry version right there. I'm sorry. That's how I feel. No, and, that, and then later, in the, again, I'm going to be – I love McNeil. I think he's one of the MVPs of this year for the Mets – the base running was horrible. Yeah. So that play was weird, right? But as a professional, you have to know what you're supposed to be doing. And that's something that Buck Showalter has talked about all year long, right? That third base umpire ran out to make the call. And as soon as the ball didn't, he goes like this, which means that he did not catch the ball. And he clearly didn't catch the ball. Um, it was like he might catch it and he should catch it, but he didn't. From there, McNeil's got to take off running. Yeah. That's fine. He's he's going to get out probably because they're going to throw it. But then he allowed it to be a double play because he turned around and told he told Canna who's watching him because if if what McNeil does, if he does his job right, he's going to be out, but he's also going to save let Canna get to second because of the way he breaks. Canna's going to read what McNeil's doing and go from there. McNeil turned around and said go back. And so Canna's like, what the hell? And they get doubled up. So that's like two big plays right there um, that cost him. And that was on McNeil's side. So that was, that was hard for me. Uh, and then the Trevor Williams, Tommy Hunter show, very impressed. Yep. Trevor Williams and Tommy Hunter saved the bullpen. So you don't have to have those, those top guys uh, back in bullpen guys throw any innings again, in a meaningless game. Trevor Williams off 15 days rest comes in and is pretty darn sharp. Um, got out of one little uh, or one big bases loaded situation, got out of it. Uh, and then Tommy Hunter asked pitching back to back days, came in, got a good inning and they were going to go to the bullpen. And he's like, no, nah, let me do this. So he threw a second inning. Uh, great job. That's something that usually goes um, unappreciated, but Buck Walter ended up um, mentioning it in his post game, but another lackluster performance yeah. from the Mets offense, their lineup, only six hits. Yeah. I'm glad you highlighted the bullpen because they have been, they've been very good over this kind of like middling stretch. The Mets are six and six in their last 12, but the bullpen is a 3.26 ERA. They have done their job. There was a lot of talk and slander about Billy Epler not upgrading the bullpen, but these guys have looked good. And I'm glad you highlighted Tommy Hunter. He had three shutout innings in the series, all of them pretty pivotal, even though they came in the losses. Uh, Trevor Williams, you said 15 days rest. That's a long time to sit around and wait for your next spot. And he goes four and a third, gives up two in runs on that one home run. Uh, yeah, home run was pretty costly though, because at, at five to one, we still felt like there was an outside chance. An yeah. Easy, like, all right, we're gonna fight this back. And then it became seven to one in the fifth. That was pretty daunting. But then in the seventh inning, that we felt momentum. First and second, nobody out. Uh, and then that that weird play, but it resulted in a double play, and then everything just gets deflated quickly because you know, what are you gonna do? I'm going to read you some numbers here that are very telling of the Mets' last, you know, 12 or so games. Dan Vogelback, one for his last 17, six strikeouts. Tyler Naquin, two for his last 30, 17 strikeouts. Darren Ruff, 
one for his last 24, nine strikeouts. The Mets are dealing with the exact same problem that plagued them in June and for most of 2022, and that is the fact that they cannot get production consistently out of that DH spot. I mean, these guys all got off to red-hot starts. They were protecting Alonzo really formidably, and then... All of a sudden, just on a dime, everything has switched. And I think that, you know, you can't attribute all the offensive struggles to that. You know, plenty of guys had tough series here. Alonzo had his one hit. It was a home run, but just the one hit. Marte struggled. Lindor struggled. Um, but, man, it's just it's a really, really frustrating watch with some of these guys recently. Yeah, uh, this is one of those things where when Pete Alonso is not going smoothly like we, we need him to or he expects to be, if anybody, if collectively we're not capable of driving in runs, if we're not clicking, yeah, like Pete Alonso is capable of throwing you on his back and he's done it for, you know, a lot of his career, but when he's not going great, you gotta have that gritty grindy kind of at bat that they've been known to do and they haven't been doing it. Yeah. They've been swinging early, swinging at bad pitches. I think I saw probably a half dozen infield pop-ups yeah like foul territory just lazy Lindor has been great for a long time he's been swinging the bat really well so I'm not going to get on uh, Lindor McNeil raked Marte looked pretty solid at the dish but outside of those guys it just feels the opposite of what they've been doing so their at-bats aren't grinding they aren't menacing to a pitching staff they weren't that at least they weren't that this series the defense was sloppy. They had two errors in the first game. Uh, and then they had that big error in game three that cost them the game uh, and sloppy base running. They got thrown out a couple of times. They had those in one game. They had the two sack flies that ended up in double plays. Um, you can say the one was heads up for McNeil because the ball sh probably should have gone all the way through to home plate. But the other one, Canna, that was a bad choice yeah. to run. Um just just sloppy you know base running defense and uh at bats those are the three things that have been basically a hallmark about how the Mets play baseball yeah. and they did it for the first time they put together a couple of games in a row where they haven't been playing Mets brand baseball now I'll forgive you but they need to get back to Mets baseball the Mets that they, the brand that they've established in spring training the from the jump how they're going to play hard nose next man up they got to get back to that because it didn't look like that these last three games yeah and i'm, I'm glad that you're saying uh these last three games specifically just because the, they looked like a different team against the dodgers you know Marte pushing a bunt and that turning into a triple scrappy plays they grinded out at bats they made kershaw throw 25 in his first inning I mean, they just looked like they had a different game plan, and it looked like they were like, okay, we beat the Dodgers, let's ease up and cruise now. And they lost 2 out of 3 to the worst team in baseball after taking 2 out of 3 from the best team in baseball. <laughs> I don't think it's telling at all that this Mets team is suddenly, you know, bad now. I just think it was a lack of energy and a lack of, you know, motivation in this series. And it's embarrassing, and they should be embarrassed for sure. <sighs> That was a tough one, especially, you know, you feel it because of how good the Braves are playing. Yeah. And you feel like you got to win this game at home against the worst team in baseball, a team that you've destroyed all season long, demoralized all season long against pitcher that you've ruined his career at the end. Um, no, man. Yeah, this is the first time and it was a let a letdown. It was the first time that they've let. There's been a few times in this season where there is an absolute easy chance for them to have a letdown series after the Braves. They, they took four out of five yep. going into the all-star break coming out. And then this was another one where they beat the Dodgers, the best team in baseball in a set go in facing the worst team. And they finally played down to their competition. Um, it happens again. You're going to get it. Yeah. Every team in baseball has a weird portion. It just very untimely. Um, and all will be forgiven if you come out, you know, what was going to be today, if you come out tomorrow and grind out those at bats, play good defense, you can lose. But if you play a good brand of baseball, like you've been playing all season long, those are easily forgivable. It's the ones where you watch the game going, 
who am I even watching? This is sloppy, lazy, sluggish. That's fine. You know, just come out tomorrow and play baseball. Well said. Uh, do you want to do an apple? I'll leave I, do, I do. Right, I do. Cool. I think I think I do. Do you want to go first? Uh, I will once I tell you who is bringing us our apple today. It's Ooh. our new friends. Stadium Map Art. Get the perfect gift for anyone in your life with Stadium Map Art. They push laser engraving to the limit, creating detailed wooden 3D stadium coasters, maps, and magnets. There are over 150 stadiums to choose from and counting. PNC Park is a pretty one. That's what we're playing next. Great for living rooms, fan caves, and sports bars anywhere. It looks great even when not in use and is sure to be a conversation piece around any table. Now they can imagine themselves at the stadium of their favorite team while also enjoying a drink at home. Stadium Map Art have shipped out Excuse me, over 10 thousand coasters shipped so far no one heard it no one no one knows each coaster is individually cut and engraved out of birch plywood at our studio in toledo ohio and crafted by father and son team dave and zach holt so if you are the worst gift giver find the perfect gift for the sports fan in your life 3d stadium coasters maps and magnets handcrafted and laser engraved in the usa by stadium map art find your team stadium at stadiummapart.com and use code SHA 15 for 15 dollars off your next order of over 15 dollars uh, fifty dollars. Excuse me. Use code SHAY15 for fifteen dollars off your first order of over fifty dollars. Thank you to them for sponsoring today's Apple, Jerry. Who you got? Thank you. Okay, so I am gonna acknowledge Jeff McNeil. Probably should have got our Apple last week. Mm. He's been playing really well. Been hitting the ball. He went five for nine, two runs scored, RBI, a walk. You put a note in here that I like. He's the fifth Mets player to drive in fifty runs this season. Uh, the Dodgers have seven, the Phillies have six, and then we have five. That's incredible. Yep. Uh, on a team that doesn't have a bunch of thumpers to have multiple guys driving 50 runs, incredible, but I'm not going to give Jeff McNeil my apple because of the things that I talked about, the sloppy defense, the sloppy base running. I can't, I can't endorse that. So on the other end of things, Eduardo Escobar, we need him. This is, he earned it. He hit. Yeah. He went three for seven, two runs scored on those two solo home runs, big ones. He had four RBI, three walks, a sack fly. He played really good defense. Um, That was awesome to see. If he's back to being Eduardo Escobar, if everything's regressed back to the norm for him to be the player that we signed, the player that he's been for a couple of years, that would be wonderful because the offense needs that guy and in the team, you talked about the, the DH position. We don't need multiple platoon spots. We need guys that we can plug in or that are going to be hitting whether it's lefties or righties and him being a switch hitter. What an absolute jolt to the, you know, to the lineup that would be. So Eduardo Escobar is the apple of my eye. Well-deserved. Glad you picked him. Um, yeah, I mean, he's an important piece here. Uh, I think it's the lone saving grace of the series probably, except for my Apple, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but people forget how good Eduardo Escobar has been the past three years. I mean, last year he had 28 home runs. He had 90 RBI in 2019. He had 35 home runs with 118 RBI for the Diamondbacks. And when the Mets signed this guy for, I think two years, 20 million, I thought it was one of the steals of the off season. This guy's a great player who can play multiple positions. He's a switch hitter and he's having a down year and there's no secrets there, but he took some really good at bats this series. He hit well from both sides of the plate, which I think is incredibly important, especially with Beatty out for probably the season. Now the Mets need him to step up, especially with the offense kind of hitting a real downturn here. So if he can put together a nice September, round out his year nicely, and have some momentum going into the postseason, I think that's going to be massive for the Mets. Uh, I'm going to do a joint apple today, which, you know, you did the bullpen a couple weeks ago. I liked that idea. I'm going to do a little bit of a joint apple. It's not the whole bullpen because Adonis Medina kind of tailed off the numbers there. Um, But I'm going to give it to Tommy Hunter and Trevor Williams. A little joint there. I think neither of these guys have gotten an apple this season, which is, you know, why I'm kind of excited to give it to them. Uh, Specifically Tommy Hunter, because, you know, he's had a really tough road the past year, especially with uh, the re-aggravation of his back injury recently. He came back way sooner 
sooner than I thought he was. Uh, I thought he might have been out for the season as well. But he's come back, and he's pitched incredibly well for the Mets, and he had three shutout innings this series. Loved how you talked about him wanting to go out there and get that extra inning. And then Trevor Williams looked great, as always, on 15 days rest, four and a third innings there. He gets out of that huge bases-loaded jam uh, and goes almost five innings from the Mets. Tommy Hunter, how about this? In his two years with the Mets, he only had four games last year, but he did pitch eight innings in those four games. He has a 1.38 ERA in 26 innings for the Mets. Uh, what was that? 1.11 whip. I mean, very quietly, maybe the best depth option in this entire bullpen, and he's doing it at age 35, which is incredibly impressive What an to me. old man. But, you know, old for big league time, you know, and especially considering the herniated discs in his back, those are not fun. They hurt a ton. And I just think that his road is pretty remarkable. And he's not getting used in big spots. Um, but you, I, I appreciate you long respecting Tommy Hunter. And, you know, you worked him into your, your postseason roster picture. And it's warranted because he's been absolutely great for the Mets. And he showed up big time in the series. So he and Trevor Williams, who has been absolutely fantastic as well, they get the apple of my eye. Um, you want to talk bullpen for a sec? Yeah, let's talk bullpen. They've Good. been sharp. They deserve yeah. some love, I think. So sure. Michael Givens, man, has been really good. Out of nowhere. Highly solid. I think uh, his last seven outings have been stellar. Two earned runs in his last eight innings. What's that? Two earned runs in his last eight innings. That's Not pretty bad. damn good. Take that Again, to the bank. He, he came into a couple of tight spots uh, recently, and he's done well. So Edwin Diaz, the guy. Adovino, even though he gave up that home run, I think he's still, still the, the eighth guy. inning guy. Seth Lugo has been incredible. He looks amazing. He's throwing, touching 98, 90, basically 94 to 98 lately. His curveball has been sharp each and every time he's thrown it, which is a very telling sign for a guy to feel good about his release point and getting out in front where he needs to be. He's the, he's that, the seventh inning, eighth inning guy, if need be. Uh, outside of that, we've got a lot of question marks. We traded for Givens. He's looked good stepping up. Um, you have Tommy Hunter we talked about who's been really good. I don't know where Drew Smith is. I don't know if, if we're going to run out of time for him to kind of come back and, and be the guy, but he's capable of doing it. Um, Tyler McGill has been really good in rehab. Yep. Uh, he struck out the side last night. Again. Again. Yeah, he's he's looking good, so he'll be a weapon. Uh, then outside of that, like you're you're gonna need those guys. So Tyler will be in there, uh, Lugo, Adovino, Givens, Diaz, and I I just cannot figure out where I stand on Joely Rodriguez. Every time he has a little bit of a blow up, he comes back out and he has like four scoreless appearances in a row. And then they use him in a higher leverage situation, and the cycle just kind of restarts again. And, you know, the Mets don't have a lefty outside of Joely. Like, he kind of just, he needs to be a part of this uh, configuration of the bullpen. Uh, so I don't know where the Mets stand on that. I, I have a love-hate relationship with Joely because he did come up big this series. But... Well, here, here's the thing. You want reliability out of the bullpen, and he, like, he's not been reliable. He's done well, but it's been like a coin flip. And for me, a lefty without a breaking ball might as well be a righty. Like right. he's a, he's a changeup guy, and he's good. He's he's got good stuff. Lugo's your lefty. Lugo's Basically, been dominant. Yeah. Lugo's been dominant versus lefties all season long. Um, so in a situation where you're like, we need this out. To me, it's it's a lefty up. To me, right now, you're going to Lugo. You're Unless absolutely Joely, right. He uh, lefties are what. 14 for 78. That's a 180 batting average against Seth Lugo, 509 OPS against. Righties have been much better. So I'd ne I didn't even know about those splits, really. He's just been so reliable for so long. It kind of just blended in. Yeah, and he's been able to dominate lefties. Uh, so he, right now, to me, he's the guy if it, if it comes. Because I don't know what version of Joely Rodriguez you're going to get. So I'm not willing to put him out there in a game where you have to win. Like, it's just the two best abilities rely uh, availability and reliability he's been available but reliable no you don't know what you're going to get and i don't want to have a heart attack 
We should put that on a shirt. Availability, reliability. The two best abilities, availability and reliability. The stencil of Jerry with the high leg kick. I feel like that's going to sell. I don't know, man. Yeah, so the Mets, uh, Tyler McGill's on his way back, struck out the side again. Six hitters, and he struck out all of them in double A. Hopefully he's ready to go soon. But Trevor May, back on the injured list. The Mets were kind of ambiguous, a little unclear about what it is. A lot of people Pretty speculated. Pretty sure it's COVID. COVID. So. I think that's every, – every sign's pointing to COVID – um, because they they did the weird you know HIPAA violation stuff right, they don't want right. to reveal, which is I'm all for it. having privacy, but then they're like, yeah, Tommy Hunter's lower back, you know, this guy had you know a herniated disc, like, and then COVID is a thing where you can't say it, like yeah, I, don't I don't know where does the if line start? Draw a line, end? Don't make it like this big and blurry. Exactly, draw a line. Give me the hockey like lower body <laughs> or left side like. Left side fatigue is like that. Uh, the Yankees love general soreness, which I love. Just general soreness. Just completely yeah. ambiguous. What battle did general soreness lead? General was soreness. That, was that the War of eighteen twelve? I think so. Yeah, I think he was involved in that. I think he survived. Uh, and Luis Guillorme, whose groin I'm very familiar with from last episode, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> He's going to look begin, at that. He's going to begin his rehab assignment soon. He said, in a quote, I'm as close to 100% as I'm going to get. I took that to mean a couple different things. Does Guillorme not believe he's going to be fully healthy for the rest of the season, or is he just kind of frustrated and he wants to get back out there? I feel like it has a couple of meanings. I'm not really sure, honestly. Yeah, I think uh, it means that he's not at 100%, but he's as good as he's going to get, and yeah. he feels good enough to play and be successful at the big league level. Yeah, hopefully he gets back out there soon. I Love think the Mets are definitely back. missing I, him. I miss watching him. I know. It feels – it's so – it's uh, it's bittersweet to feel in September with the Mets being so competitive – the void of Luis Guillorme, who's been lo- a longtime bench piece, fringe major league guy, turning into an integral cog of the Mets lineup. And they've definitely felt his, his void. I think the defense especially, but also just, you know, grinding out at bats and constantly getting up on base at the bottom of the lineup and offering that platoon option. The Mets have missed him dearly, so hopefully he Where's comes he back. Where's he going to play? Third base, second base, McNeil gonna maybe get some DH outfield DH Eduardo time. Escobar and let Guillermo play third? I mean, the DH has been a void, so maybe, honestly. If Escobar's hot, I think you just got to ride hot hands and get as many wins in September as you can because the Braves don't lose. They don't yeah, lose games. I, yeah. All right. Pittsburgh time? Yeah, let's do some previews. Give me the rundown. Looking ahead. Here we go. Game one, Taiwan Walker, Mr. Taco himself. He's 10 and three <laughs> with a 3.45 ERA. He'll be facing off against quite the big league name and Mitch Keller, who's had a solid season. He's four and 10 with a 4.43 ERA. Walker versus Pittsburgh in 2021, not pretty. If you remember, that was the weird, you know, ball to the backstop where he just stood there and was like arguing. Anyway, he was five and a third inning, seven earned runs, eight hits, seven walks, two strikeouts uh that was the ugliest outing probably of his career uh but his last four starts he's been 18 and a third with a seven earned runs that's a three four four era 13 k's 10 walks hasn't been great but i think he's gonna bounce back and look himself mitch keller in august 23 innings pitched 12 earned runs that's 4.7 era and a 305 betting average against tyler naquin in his career kind of a sleeper three for eight with an rbi that is game one game two Jacob DeGrom, the goat himself, he's four and one with a one nine eight ERA. He's going up against Bryce Wilson. Speaking of Atlanta, you might remember him from his days as a Brave. He is two and eight with a six one two ERA. That is not great. Uh, DeGrom's last two starts, two and oh, 13 innings pitch, two earned runs, two walks, 18 punch outs. Again, two walks, 18 punch outs. That's pretty damn good. Uh, Bryce Wilson on the other side of the coin. He's four starts, 16 and third innings, 13 earned runs. That's a seven uh, in 318 against him. Tyler Naquin, another sleeper on this guy. Two for three with a homer. Uh, theme, is he going to play both sides? Anyway, that is game two. Game three, Christopher Bassett Hound himself. He's 12 and seven with a 3-3-2 ERA. He's facing off against Johan Oviedo. He's two and one with a 2-8-6. One of their sneaky looking prospects here. Bassett in August, six games started, five and oh, 39 and a third innings pitch with a 1-8-3 ERA, eight walks to 26 strikeouts. Let me repeat that. Six games started, 5-0 and with a 183 ERA. That is fantastic. Sneaky, 
dominance. He's made one start. Uh, Oviedo is three innings of no runs. Did walk three, punched out four. Uh, he got he was over in the Jose Quintana trade. Uh, Tomas Nito, another Tyler Naquin type guy. Uh, he's two for two with a home run off Oviedo. So I guess I know who's going to be starting that game. <laughs> that is your three game set must win series in Pittsburgh at the beautiful PNC Park. We have a rain out today, which is Monday. We're going to play a double header on Wednesday. So a single game tomorrow, two games on Wednesday. And that is the series. Yeah, big doubleheader for Los Mets uh, earlier in the season. They swept doubleheaders from the Giants, and they swept doubleheaders from the Braves. Ever since, they've been splitting them, so this would be a really good time to get back to that mojo. They also took a doubleheader against the Cubs right before the All-Star break. The Mets need one of those bad. They need some wins here bad. Um, glad we highlighted Tyler Naquin. I think if anybody of the DH platoon is going to have a big series, it should be him. So get him some playing time. Hopefully he can calibrate and, you know, turn down those strikeout numbers a little bit. Uh, but the Mets are going to get good pitching. Bassett's been incredible. Jacob deGrom is Jacob deGrom. And uh, PNC Park is a, is a place of some bad memories for the recent Mets, especially from last year. You talked about the Taiwan Walker start, which, you know, people forget. They actually won that game. Uh, Conforto had the big home run. Travis Blankenhorn, I, hit, I think, hit a 3 run home run. I forgot they actually did win Yeah, that they game. won that game, which is I weird. Because I think they went down 6 nothing in the first or something. Um but the Mets, you know, I think uh, they have. A, I hope they have a chip on their shoulder. I think you know they got a little embarrassed. They have an off day today to really, you know, stew in that series loss and really get it in their brains. I hope they come out angry, and I don't want them to, you know, stay eased off the gas pedal. Really beat down a team that you know that you are much, much better than. Especially because you're not getting the best pitcher in their rotation, which is Contreras. He's having a great season. I think he came over from the Yankees. Um, you're getting, you know, a young kid in Oviedo. You're getting Bryce Wilson, who struggled all season, and Mitch Keller, who hasn't really put it together at the big league level, but has some nice stuff. Uh, this is a team you should sweep, and this is a team you should want to sweep. So go out there and just do it. Yeah, I'm going to go got to win the series, two out of three. Got to win two out of three. Sweep would be great. You can't expect sweeps, especially on the road. Go in there, play a good brand of baseball, and you have to win two. If you win three, you win three. Again, don't worry about what the Braves are doing because you can't look over your shoulder. You might trip over yourself, stumble, slow down. That's what happens. Uh, a couple of things for this lineup. They have Brian Reynolds, who's, you know, been their, one of their best players. Um, and then it's the return of Daniel Vogelback to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Old yeah, stopping I wonder grounds. if they're going to put a little, you know, little tribute video <laughs> for his 75 games in Pittsburgh. His significance. Uh, but they have Michael Chavis, who, you know, came up with the Red Sox. He's been hitting. He's got 14 homers. O'Neal Cruz, their uber prospect, the world's biggest shortstop. He's like 6'6", yeah. uh, a monster of a prospect. Uh, he's a left-handed hitter. Big pop. Uh, he's struggled a little bit, but he's got 12 homers. Uh, Brian Reynolds got 21. He's having a really good year. Uh, but outside of that, man, this is a, not a very good hitting team. Uh, but they do have some pitching. Their their bullpen is pretty nasty. Um, they're going to have some guys at the back end. Bednar's on the DL or IL, so he's not going to be. But they got Chase DeYoung, DeJong. I'm not sure how they pronounce I think DeYoung. It. You had it right. DeYoung, yeah. He's pretty darn good. Um, he's been dominant. Dwayne Underwood Jr. has been really good in, in some of his games. So they're going to have some fireballers in the bullpen. Uh, so you want to get to these starters, man. That's the key. Yeah, for sure. Get to the starters. I'm glad you brought up O'Neill Cruz. Uh, he has been struggling, but of recently he's been pretty hot. His last eight games, he's OPSing near 900, two homers, two triples, uh, two walks in that span. So the Mets are getting him when he's starting to kind of click at the major league level. So you got to be careful about him. But other than that, this lineup is not very deep. Key Brian Hayes is not having the season that they thought he would after signing that extension. Uh, Brian Reynolds is kind of the lone bright spot, but even for him, these numbers are kind of down. You expect him to be, you know, kind of that all-star caliber player. And the young guys just haven't really been clicking for Pittsburgh. Calvin Mitchell has been struggling. Uh, Kevin Newman has been up and down and he's been struggling. Um, this is a team that you should beat up. Uh, the Braves went into PNC and they swept the, uh, the pirates. And I know you said, don't look over your shoulder. Don't think about the Braves, but you also want to match them. You want to, you know, anything that they can do, you can do better. It's kind of the, the operation that I want the Mets to start instilling a little bit. So, you know, go in there, beat the crap out of them a little bit. Why not? Let's do it. Play, play Mets baseball. Keep your head down. 
focus on what you can do to win a ball game, play hard, play the game the right way, be smart, be paying attention to what's going on. And if you win, you win. You got to trust yourself. If the Braves show up and beat you, then so be it. But you can't worry about what they're doing because you've got baseball's hard enough. Just focus on what you got to do. Let us on this side of things talk about the Braves. Just play Mets baseball. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that'll do it for us, Jer. You got anything else? That's it. I don't, man. I don't. Good app considering the circumstances. We'll see you guys on Thursday for our Thursday next episode. morning we'll be back at it. Sweet. Let's go Mets. I'm Jolly. Let's go Mets. And see you then.